Okay, in the last video, we looked at doing inference with the Alpaca 7 billion model. In this video, I'm going to show you how I basically trained up the checkpoint using the data that they have here. I've shown this a few times. They do have uh, the whole training recipe in here, which is very good. And they also released a bunch of code with the details about the training right down through the data and even things down to the fine tuning of this. So. There are a number of things that are interesting with this that are worth checking out. And perhaps in another video, I'll talk about making your own data set with this. So it's quite possible to make your own data set with the way that they've done it. The way we're going to be doing the fine tuning is using this library from Hugging Face called Parameter Efficient Fine Tuning. And what this is doing is making use of the 8-bit from bits and bytes, and also this library from Hugging Face that allows us to basically do a LoRa fine tuning. So I think this kind of deserves a whole video of itself for me to explain what LoRa is. For now, just think of it that you're not actually tuning the original weights. You're inserting weights at different parts of the network and tuning those to get what it is that you want. So the other day I saw that someone had already made an example of doing this and put it up on GitHub. So I think this is Eric Wang who's done this. And it's a really nice version of just putting it together. I think he's still updating it when I trained it the other day. So it, it seems like he's updating it right up until now. All right. What I did was I took his code so I, you can check this out. And then I've just built a collab around it. And actually when I did it, I think he may have added some collabs and stuff now, but what this actually does is just quite simple. There are a few challenges that exist with this in relation to the fact that the llama weights are not available and that because of that, they're not actually in the hugging face library. So. Here you can see that we're basically bringing uh, a few different things from Hugging Face of data sets. We've got another few libraries, the LoRa library, which is used for doing the low rank adaption training. We've got a sentence piece tokenizer. And then because of this, we need to install a special version of Transformers. And this is basically where someone has added in the ability to have the Llama tokenizer and the Llama model for this. Without this, if you just install the regular transformers, it will basically give you an error and tell you that these things don't exist in the model. And because of the controversy around the weights and the status of that code, this hasn't been merged into the main repo as far as I know it at the moment. The last one we're installing is the parameter efficient fine tuning library. Like I said, I think I'll do a whole video just on this because it's a very cool library and they've added quite a few things to it recently as well. Last of all, we're going to be using the bits and bytes. So this allows us to load a model in 8-bit format and sets up the model in 8-bit format, which means that we don't need as big a GPU to be able to do the training, etc. So first off, just do a data check here. The tokenizer, and you'll see later on the model that we're using, come from the Llama 7 billion, and they're coming from these set of weights, which are actually on Hugging Face. So I don't know if they're going to stay on Hugging Face, but for the time being, at least they're on Hugging Face and you can use them. The cool thing, Stanford released the data set that they used. We don't need to spend the $500 to make it like they did. We can just use the data set that they have used and just process that. For setting up the fine tuning, there's a few things, some standard things that we bring in. We're going to need this Llama for causal language modeling because Llama is a decoding model and so is Alpaca decoder only model. We've got the tokenizer that we're using for that. Um, and then, you know, just a few things from the PEF library of preparing for int integer eight training, the LoRa config and getting the model, et cetera. So your hyperparameters you want to set up here. So for an A100, I found that I could easily go to eight examples for the sort of micro batch. And what we're actually doing is we're going for a batch size of 128, but we're only going to update the gradients every 128. So here you can see the gradient accumulation steps is just our batch size divided by this. So if you're doing this on a smaller GPU, like a 3090 or something, you definitely want to change to probably to a micro batch size of four. I probably could have pushed this to 10 or 12 on the A100. But from memory on the A100, I was using about 29 gigabytes of VRAM when I looked at it halfway through training. On the Stanford version, they train for three epochs. Here I've just trained for two, and it seems to get a very good result even with two. For me, I would prefer to have a bigger data set if I was going to train for longer with that. We're using the original learning rate. And one of the notes from the original repo, which was very useful, was that he basically looked through. So they originally at Stanford, they trained with 512 here. 
But what he realized was that if you just bring that down to 256, it's going to make your training a lot faster. Uh, and that covers about 96% of all the data in there. So you're only cutting off a very small amount of the data. If you want to do it exactly like they did it, train it for 512. All right. So here we've got the number of attention heads for the LoRa part that we're setting here. We've got also got the alpha for the LoRa scaling in here. And then we've got the dropout. So this is basically on the LoRa sort of layers. This is how much dropout we're using. All right, standard it off, we're bringing in them. So we're loading it in eight bits and then the device map is to auto here and we're bringing in the tokenizer. So this will take some time to load. You can see it's quite big. It's got 33 binaries in there. Each of them are quite big, but it certainly loads a lot quicker than the 13 and the 30. I can tell you that having now trained those. The LoRa config is just basically passing in what we set up there and the type that one of the main things here is that we're doing causal language model training as opposed to SIG to SIG training, which we, is what you would use for if you're doing a T5 model or something like that. We can bring in the data here and you can see this is actually doubling up what is above with the link thing, but this is how we're generating the prompts. So we can see the different kinds of prompts that it will basically take in an instruction and it will have an output for our training. We just shuffle the data up and then set up the trainer. So the trainer is going to basically use the sizes that we've set up, the gradient accumulation steps that we've set up, the number of warm up steps. Because we're not doing a huge amount of steps overall, you probably can keep this small. It was set to 100. I found this worked really well as well. All right. You want to set your output directory, et cetera, and then just kick off the training. And you'll see that over time, certainly the first 100 steps, might you won't see a huge decrease in the loss. But gradually after that, you will then start to see the loss really kick in and go right through. And then if you want to upload this to your Hugging Face account, you then basically need to push to the hub. So to do that, you will need to log in and get your credentials. So you need a right credential for doing this. Name it for what that you want to do. Here you can see I've just put my username. I've put the, the name for this. I think you can even set to private equals true here. I've forgotten how to do that at the moment, but I've certainly done it in the past. And you can then basically generate. So this is just some inference code. If you you are loading it up. You can also just start generating and you'll see that the outputs turn out to be pretty nice. These are some of the ones that I covered, I think in the inference video already. And this was one of the examples of the, actually the Python code that it created for checking prime numbers. So it's fun to do. I certainly encourage you to do it. The model is exceptionally good. I think for the size, it's certainly one of the best models I've seen for this size. And we do hope that Facebook will end up allowing a wider use of the, at least this 7 billion parameter model. Anyway, as always, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If this was useful to you, please click like, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye for now.